So around about a week ago, I created a detailed and comprehensive guide to making your Microsoft Flight Simulator installations both look and perform as best as possible. This included not just a detailed comparison between various different in-sim graphics settings, but also a full showcase of my NVIDIA control panel settings, my overall PC settings, as well as my user config file settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if you guys aren't one of the 40,000 people that have watched it or benefited from this just yet, check it out on the top right hand corner of the screen or in the description section of this video. I'd highly recommend you watch both these videos as a series to get the most out of them. Today, therefore, as as the title and thumbnail suggests, we'll be checking out not just one, not just two, but three separate NVIDIA freestyle color filters. Stay tuned. What is going on guys, Flyby Simulations here, and welcome back to another detailed guide on the channel. Now before we get started, I must say that the speed at which this channel is growing is absolutely astonishing. So if you want to be part of the Flyby Simulations journey, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications to not miss out on any more guides, tutorials, and the latest in Microsoft Flight Simulator news. I am still working on that 10,000 subscriber special video with a $100 giveaway as well, so tons to look forward to on the channel in the near future. With that all out of the way, let's get into the video. So to start things off, I just want to address some of the unintentional mistakes and suggestions I made in my previous settings guide video. Of course, this video does have chapters, so if you just want to skip to the color filters, use the chapters in the video to scrub around and find out what you're looking for. To start things off then, I saw tons of people asking me what FPS I got with these settings I showcased. Well, I have a full dedicated performance comparison video up on my channel showing differences between the Sim Update 10 and Sim Update 11 performance. So again, that'll be linked in the description section of the video so you can see my performance there in detail. Next up, I also saw there was a great deal of debate about image scaling being turned on in my NVIDIA control panel and whether to leave it on or off. Well, I can confirm that I personally turn image scaling off when using Microsoft Flight Simulator, especially because it adds further graininess and artificial sharpening that makes my sum look patchy. The reason I recommended in my previous video was because I thought it might help with lower end machines that want additional base visual sharpening without a cost to their performance. I now realize that it would be the wrong suggestion to make to 90% of viewers out there and I should have put a disclaimer there, so apologies for that. Now if you are one of those people that are seeing visual degradation with this setting turned on and it isn't going away even after turning off image scaling in your global settings in the NVIDIA control panel, I do have a fix for you coming up, so just stay tuned. Moving on from the NVIDIA control panel settings, let's focus on an error I made in the user cfg.opt file. Now, there was a lot of confusion about finding this file for yourselves, especially for those people that didn't purchase their copies of Microsoft Flight Simulator from Steam and either bought it independently from the Microsoft Store or used Xbox Game Pass to purchase the sim. All I can do to help you guys there again is to just say that I've left a path location in the description section of my video, so try to see if you can find this file through the path specified, and if not, a quick Google search should also do the trick and help you out. For those that have managed to locate this file, simply open it up and go down to this post process section and disable color grading. So delete the one and put a zero right next to it to turn it off. After playing around with some of my color filters and settings, I now feel that the sim looks much better with color grading off and instead have the colors be manually adjusted using the NVIDIA freestyle settings we'll speak about in just a second. So just to avoid any discrepancies, I mentioned turning the color grading on in the previous video, but for the purposes of this one, I recommend turning it off. Now, someone also very cleverly pointed out that the file we just edited does have read and write privileges. What that means is that after every sim update or world update, these settings will reset. So to avoid your hard work getting erased each time, I believe there's a pretty simple fix that you can implement. Simply right click on this user cfg.opt file again, go into properties and in this attribute section, simply select read only. I don't know if this method will 100% work, but from what I understand, what it does is that it locks anyone, even you, from editing the file any further in the future. So make sure you make the color grading edits first and then change the privileges as shown in the video. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. So with those fixes and disclaimers out of the way, let's discuss how I get my sim to look the way it does. 
The answer is NVIDIA Freestyle Filters. If you have an NVIDIA GTX or RTX GPU, you should also have the NVIDIA GeForce Experience application installed on your machine. If you don't have it installed, simply use the link in the description section of the video and download the version of GeForce Experience that's most applicable for your GPU. Once done, launch GeForce Experience and you will be brought to this home page. Here, as you can see, you can view all your games and make settings profiles for each of them and such, but we don't really care about all that. All we want to do is simply click on this gear icon, which will bring you up to these settings. Here, you just want to enable this in-game overlay setting. This in-game overlay allows you to record your content, throw up FPS counters, and adjust the colors and details of any application that's supported by NVIDIA on the fly. While we're here, let me also quickly address those people that lost their visual quality in their sim despite turning off image scaling in the NVIDIA control panel as was mentioned in the beginning of the video. What could have happened is that this image scaling option might have turned on automatically in the GeForce Experience tab when you toggled on the option in NVIDIA control panel. So simply turn off this setting and your computer will go black screen for a moment, but then will come back on while running at your native monitor resolution. Once all this is done, navigate over to the drivers window and ensure you're running the latest GPU drivers, and then exit out of GeForce Experience and launch Microsoft Flight Simulator. Alrighty guys, so now that we've made our way into the simulator and have enabled the in-game overlay within the GeForce Experience app, we're ready to start configuring the colors in Sim. We're using the drone camera here to show you the changes in the terrain, the mesh, and the water in our surroundings on the fly. The reason I've chosen Vancouver here is that it provides a great blend of different types of scenery you can encounter. So it's one of the only cities that has a flat land, mountains in the distance, and the ocean right here. So you can see all the changes we make with each of the color filters clearly. So go ahead and press Alt F3 and this game filter window should pop up. As you can see, we can concurrently have three profiles set up at once. So I have three to show you that you can try out and pick whichever one suits you the best. For the first one, let's navigate over to profile number one and click on add filter. From here, let's first choose color. From the drop down menu, we'll go ahead and adjust the individual parameters. So we'll dial the tint color and tint intensity both to zero. We'll then get the temperature to as close to negative 22 as possible, and this one's important, the vibrance to also around about negative 14. One thing you'll notice is that the default colors in Microsoft Flight Simulator are pretty warm and washed out, so we have to lower the color temperature and vibrance towards the cooler side to make sure the naturally realistic sky blue is as close to real life as possible. This also helps with the water. We're not done yet though, simply click add a filter again and from here select details. First things first, bring the sharpening all the way back down to zero. We don't want any artificial sharpening happening that can reduce our overall picture quality or increase cloud graininess. Next up, I personally like setting my clarity setting to around about 40%, which creates a nice crisp looking picture. Again, depending on your monitor resolution, you might want to play around with this setting to make it as realistic as possible on your end. Finally, I like putting the HDR toning to around 10% and the bloom to around about 15%. The bloom helps make light bearing objects pop a bit more and create distortions that are akin to real life. The HDR toning helps with that haze effect in the distance that you see from high altitudes. Finally, we'll add one more filter here, aka the brightness and contrast filter. Now here, these are my settings, but I do want to make an important note. Copying my settings exactly here might still look different on your monitor, as a lot of the parameters here, including the contrast, the gamma, the shadows, the exposure, are all dependent on your specific monitor or TV. I'm personally running the sim on a 24-inch Dell monitor at 1080p resolution with a maximum refresh rate of 144Hz. Your individual monitors might have different color calibrations and baseline visuals, so though these settings might be a good benchmark for you guys, do play around with these sliders a little to achieve the look you desire. This is by far my favorite color profile showcase though, as it provides a stunningly realistic look both at high altitudes as well as down near the terrain. I also love the way the water bodies look with this filter as they have that reefy look that's really cool, and even in the evening or at night, the bloom and HDR toning do their job and the stars in the sky, the lights on the ground, and the reflections of the clouds all do look awesome in my opinion. That all being said, I do have two other color profiles for you guys to choose from as well, so for edge case scenarios and if you guys want to try out different baselines, these can possibly be helpful. 
I'm not going to walk you guys through setting them up as you guys get the picture now, so simply copy the settings on screen as I touch on why I recommend them. The first is this ultra realism profile, I guess, that tries to recreate an ultra realistic washed out look of the world. You might think that the initial profile I might have showed you was a little too bright, clear, and overexposed. So if you really want your textures to be a little washed out, realistic, and rugged looking, uh, make sure to copy paste these settings on screen and that should do the trick. I've personally noticed that this profile works well whenever I'm making cinematics with snow involved specifically, as the exposure is lower than the first profile I showed, allowing you to see the white definitions of the snow coverage on the ground better. On the complete flip side, I have the Ultra Visuals profile, which is highly unrealistic in real life for the most part, as far as I can see, as it's essentially trying to replicate a low exposure, high contrast, high shadow count picture. As you can see, everything's a little warmer, everything's a little oversaturated, and everything stands out a little bit more. This is especially useful if you're trying to film cinematics or trying to put the airplane you're flying as the subject instead of the surrounding scenery. Again, you can copy these settings on screen to be able to replicate this profile, but again, remember things might look slightly different on your individual displays or monitors, so do play around with your sliders to get the picture to look as good as you'd like it to. These are just baseline images and settings, but I have to say that the first profile I showed is what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. With that all said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching and I hope these profiles helped you. Do click on either of these links on screen to watch either my complete Sim Update 11 settings guide or see what Microsoft Flight Simulator has in store for us in 2023. The newest world update has been announced and there's tons more juicy info in that video too. With that said guys, thanks for watching and thanks for flying by.